close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. Focus your attention right there. Stay with that one spot. As the breath comes in, the breath goes out, like a post at the edge of the sea. The post is firmly planted in the sand. The tide rises, the post doesn't rise with it. The tide falls back, the post doesn't fall back. It stays right there. So have your mind just stay right there. And ask yourself if the breath is comfortable. If it is comfortable, keep up whatever rhythm you've got. If it's not comfortable, you can change. Make it longer, shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. Try to find what kind of breathing feels best right now, because you want to get the mind to stay here in the present moment, and the breath is your anchor. When you're with the breath, you know you're in the present. Otherwise, you try to watch your mind and you suddenly find yourself off someplace else. But you really do have to watch the mind. The mind is very tricky. It can fool you into all kinds of things. The Buddha said it's like a magic trick. You think you're looking at one thing and all of a sudden there's something else. And why do we need to watch the mind? Because all the goodness in life comes from the mind, it comes from our intentions. But the problem is our intentions are not reliably good. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good. We have to watch them carefully too. Because if you act on unskillful intentions, okay, the results are going to be pain, either right now or down the line. If you act on good intentions, you're going to meet with pleasure. So you have to be very careful to watch what your intentions are, so you see clearly why you're doing things. Most people don't. You ask them sometimes, why did you do that? And they say, I don't know. You have to think for a bit. If you really are with your intentions, you know precisely why you do something. That way you stay in control. Otherwise it's like putting your car on automatic pilot and then getting out of the car. And the car just goes and it'll run into something. And who's going to suffer? The car doesn't suffer. The car doesn't care. You're the one who's going to suffer. Because you've got to pay for the damages, you've got to fix the car. So. Making sure that you're really right here with your intentions. This is one of the reasons why we make merit, is so we can be very conscious of our intentions of trying to do something good. You make, you make donations, you observe the precepts, you develop thoughts of goodwill. Those are intentions that you can be proud of, and you're more willing to look at them. If you're acting on shady intentions, you don't want to look. If you like to hide it, you like to light it in more layers of shade. And that way you never get to know your mind. But if you consciously start acting on good intentions, you want to make them skillful. Because we're here for merit and for skill. And they're two different things. Merit is when you have a good intention. Skillful is when your intention is not just good, but it's wise. In other words, you, you can act on a good intention to be generous, but if you're really wise, you see, what's the best place to give my gift? Who will make the best use of it? What kinds of gifts are good for them? What kind of gifts will I find real satisfaction in having given? In other words, you think about it. You think it through. And that way you develop your discernment. Because you're going to need your discernment as you train the mind in virtue and as you train your mind in, in meditation. Because in virtue, sometimes you come up with situations where you know you can't lie, but someone's asked you for some information that you know they're going to misuse. So how do you not give the information, but at the same time don't lie? Same with all, all the precepts. There are going to be situations where you're challenged, and so you're going to need to use your discernment. So it's good to start using your discernment with generosity and with goodwill. You need to use your discernment there, too, because there will be times when the mind says, how can I have goodwill for these people? They don't deserve it. You have to remind yourself you're spreading thoughts of goodwill to people not because they deserve it, but because it's good for you. If you allow ill will into your mind, then you're going to start doing unskillful things. And who's going to suffer? Again, you're the one who suffers. So we all do all of this because we're looking for happiness in a responsible way. We're thinking about the long-term consequences of what we're doing as we look for happiness both for ourselves and for other people. And if you're wise, skillful, and responsible in your search for happiness, then you get a happiness that's really solid and reliable. Otherwise, you can't depend on it. 
So we all want something that's reliable. We have to make ourselves reliable in being generous, in being virtuous, developing thoughts of goodwill. Reliable in knowing what's going on in our minds. So this is one of the reasons why we meditate, is to see clearly what's happening, and to put the mind in a position where it's happy to do what's skillful. It's in this way that your generosity helps your meditation, and your meditation helps your generosity. All three forms of making merit, generosity, virtue, and developing goodwill, help one another along. It's in that way they get strong. It's like having a stool that has three legs. If it has three legs, it's going to be solid. If it has only two legs or two legs or one leg, you don't want to sit on it. It's going to fall over. If you have all three legs, then you can sit on it in ease and security.